Um, so my name's uh, Steve Hunt. Um, I am involved in product strategy and product management in our systems management side. So you guys may or may not be familiar with server and application monitor, virtualization manager, storage resource monitor. Those are the, that side of our, our portfolio are the things that I work on. All right, so I got really ambitious with this because I was told that I could do it. Um, so I wanted to have the ability to not necessarily have to step away from what I wanted to show you of, of an environment um, and be able to, to draw while I did it. So I can... Uh, Make little oh, smiley faces and stuff like that. So just know that I'm going to geek out for a little bit um, <laughs> because I was told I could do this and I like to do fun, geeky things. Um, so recording. Chris showed you guys some stuff on the network side that we're doing in the labs. I'm going to show you some stuff on the systems management side. Um, you guys all have kind of agendas and I'll, I'll go through some things, maybe fast, maybe quick, depending upon your interaction and what you seem to find interest in. But I've got a few different things to show you. Unfortunately, um, my dev teams would not give me any um, stable builds of any of these things to show you guys live builds, but um, I've got what I consider the next best thing, um, working with our UX designers, actually putting together um, the, the UI visualizations of these things. Um, so the first thing I'm going to show you is what we uh, lovingly call um, SEM, or Server Config Management. <coughs> Um, the premises of this is really that we need to understand as an IT administrator what, um, you know, what's happening in our servers and our applications. What's changing? Is there a problem? Um, so that, that's one of the things that we want to be able to show uh, our customers is can they actually be able to find issues without having to go like dig for it, right? We just want to show it blah, 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 real time. So, what you'll see here, um, this is an example of a node in an environment, uh, more specifically a server. Um, and I believe, yeah, this, so this would be a, uh, an IS server. Um, the whole aspect is not only being able to show, um, drag this down here, not only being able to show like, hey, there was something that changed, but in the grand scheme of what's going on in your environment, right? So we've got an alert that happened um, in the environment, and then we can come back to the configuration and understand, was there anything that changed, right? Um, so I told you I was going to geek out and draw all over the screen because oh, cool. I like impressive. doing this. Um, so we can see really quickly that, okay, yeah, so a site went down. Why did that go down? We got an alert that the site's down. Um, well, somebody went and changed a port binding from 443 to 442, and um, Someone this didn't is where the event correlation comes in handy. With exactly, right. exactly, right? So, mm. yeah, we like that whole like end-to-end -end concept it's to like be able to show everybody. Changes right from here. Exactly. So, and that's that's kind of the the really. I mean, when some people look at it, they're like, oh, that's kind of like a small thing. But when you're trying to solve a problem, when you have an outage, an application outage, this is really, really important because um, where's the problem exist? What happened to make the problem happen? We want to try and provide that type of information. So um, we got some of our guys that did some really cool stuff in the lab. They decided to um, build some tech that's going to go out, look at the different servers in the environment, understand what are the configurations of these different applications that are running, um, bring that information in, and then understand as those changes happen over time, um, let's, let's represent those accordingly. Can you explain which, what I'm looking at here? I mean, there's, you know, what's the little bubble there, something, some property change, some file removed, <laughs> some file added, and then there's subsequent bubbles underneath that? Yep. Yeah, so these would all just be different things that may have happened um, over time, right? So and this, some, is, this is to a server or to an application? Yes. Or to a you know, <laughs> Any, cloud? Both. Any, <laughs> both, anything. So um, essentially what there would be a... Tracking these things, because I can go in there and I can go in and change a port, you know, or change a file and, you know, Yep. there's nothing... Where is your agent to do all this stuff? Exactly. So we would have Where a service are they? Essentially there must be like running. 50 of them or something. The, so we would have something needing to run right now in what we've got built in the lab. We have a service that runs on every single node, very, very lightweight, that can then take a look at um, configuration files, port mappings, just anything that we can determine in terms of the application. Compute nodes, networking nodes, storage nodes, I mean... Uh, right now, we're focusing on server and application. So we would be looking at like Linux and uh, Windows operating system nodes, as well as the applications that run on them. Um, Virtualization, but the, but the, VMware. Yes, yes. so ESX host. 
perfect thing if anyone's a virtualization geek in here. Like, if I don't I have a virtualization geek. correlating uh, configurations mm -hmm. in my cluster host, right, then I can't necessarily do some of the things I need to do. Um, I might get an error when I try to go to deploy something to that, that cluster. So they run at, like, uh, hesitate to say it's the ESX layer, or they run at the virtual machine layer, or Both. where do these agents run? Both. And again, that's all conceptual. This is just us playing in the lab. What we actually are able to we deploy, we'll, we'll yet to already. see. What's that? You have something built already. So something. Not entirely conceptual. Testing that the guys are, are, are playing back and forth with. But yeah, so the, the concept is like a lightweight service that, that can then get, gather this information and report it back to a centralized For instance, area. this alert that says the podcast solarwind.com is down, how did you detect that? That the... This. Yeah, that little thing. Not, yeah, well, actually, yeah, because the, the red line is based on the one before that, right? Yeah, I'll clear that out. Oh, God, I am impressed. Erase. There you go. You're talking about that right there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so that's the great thing about when we build our products and we integrate into the whole Orion platform. Um, we have different products that can show different things. So essentially, this would be the example of um, we got an alert, an Orion-based alert, from where we were monitoring uh, one of our websites, and then we determined, hey, that went down. And it plugged into this tool. Correct. Or these, these tools kind of integrate together as you, when you put them all together. So if, if you think about it, if I was just running this, say, say we wanted to create this individually, right? Like we, the customer was just running just this SEM concept. We likely wouldn't have the aspect of an alert popping up because there's no alerting system running, right? We're just, at this point, we would just simply go, okay, I've changed. determined that a property changed, right? I've determined that a configuration changed, right? There was some the information. Rationale for having it, uh, you know, some file added, some property change alert, because all that happened in that day, or actually that shift, I guess. Time slice, essentially. Yes. Yep. And the little the little things underneath there, the little, uh, I don't even want, know what to call them, little block blobs are indicating what? Are we talking about? The blue things in that line underneath there? <laughs> yeah. Right there? Yeah, so those are events. Those are things. So as you see, there's... So on December 22nd, there are five of those blobs. There's, not, there's nothing articulated above that. You're talking about here? No, I'm talking about the one before 22nd, that. 22nd, all the way to the left. Over here? Yeah. Yeah, so essentially, we would be looking at like a series in time. Yeah, I understand underneath. It, but... Let me ask the question in a different way. Do okay. the blobs, I don't even know what they call to them, do they, <laughs> are they correlate with the dates above them? Do, you're asking me if these correlate with these dates? No, no, no. I'm asking if the, the boxes below the date line, the little blue and or red, those things, correlate with the dates above them. Yes. So, back to my question. There are five blue boxes underneath the date December 22nd. Mm -hmm. What does that tell me? That tells you in this case that you had, let's see what were these. So these would be actual setting indicators. And they would correlate the colors above. Correct. Correct. So if you notice, there is. So why don't you go down to December 22nd? December 22nd on this list of below has a black box. That said, you know, a Windows Server profile directory content I, it was, was added, apparently, right? Mm -hmm. But above there, December 22nd has five blue boxes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So there's no correlation between them. No, no, there is correlation. So the anticipation there is correlation. What you get is the fact that I don't have a build ready. Ah, and we're simply just test. looking at a this UI test. Okay. conceptual, right? Oh, this is conceptual? This is just the conceptual UI mock-up of, oh, of this I got concept. You. I'm I, sorry. Because, again, they would not give me a live build um, to show you guys today. They I wouldn't commit that to me. I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> but so to answer your question, yes, the correlation is... is Anything that you're going to see in terms of that, in, that, that little blob, right, that, that pops up in there on that date, you are going to have a correlating event there event and some information that's, that's above down, as well. Right? It's going to say that these things change. Exactly. And so I can essentially time slice it and go look at that, and that lower list is then going to reflect based upon what I'm looking at in that time slice. So we'll see for every instance at a high level visualization, right? From a UI perspective, I'm not sure the little blobs add much. Okay. 
Just my personal opinion. Now, is that, and I, and I could see, I, I would 100% agree with you if we're looking at a small time slice, but if I'm looking at a really, really large time slice to, that I want to understand, all right, where's, where did the red happen and go directly to that? I think that's really where we, we wanted to provide an incremental. I think that red box above has, has an indication of where that red happens. Even yeah, if it was, you know, even if it like was condensed. Days. He's only looking at like five days. What oh. I know, if I'm like looking at a month, it's still the red box is going to be there, right? I just realized I in this mock-up why that is. So check that out right there. Essentially, we are looking at a time slice. This time slice is what we're showing in the above portion. So you do see the black, the red, the yellow in that situation. So then, then I could, if I wanted to go back and I wanted to look specifically at this time slice, I would slide that over there and then above I would start to see that information. Well, there's no correlation between the blobs below and, and, and the boxes above. There's intended to be. <laughs> I, I, I don't see good. why there's not I'm correlation. Good. I'm good. <laughs> So the intention is that this is a big zoom? Yes. This is a small zoom? Yes. Right. Yes. I got you. Okay. okay. I'm good. Will, or are there plans to have the ability to maybe do trending of information? So let's say I want to know um, every time there was a red failure in the last six months, would I be able to do that, or is this really just day by day, and then I have to kind of guess? So, like, let me explain a little mm -hmm. further. So, let's um, let's say that red failure. Okay, it's IAS is down, mm -hmm. but now I want to see how often IAS has been down for my Solar Winds podcast. Right. Will there be the ability to trend that out a little bit more? So that, that's an interesting concept. Um, in some of our products, we are looking at trending aspects in terms of determining when issues occur. Not specifically for this one. This one would be if we had that trending capability sitting in, in a product that then would alert based upon, hey, every 30 days you seem to be having this problem. Um, this is more of when that problem is occurring, allow you to go determine that root cause. So as opposed to let me go figure out in the future if that's going to happen, this is more of that standpoint of that event is happening, it has happened, or it is happening, let's go find out what details are associated with that event to determine did anything change from the application layer or the operating system layer to then determine root cause. So this is last seven days. Is there an intention? This sounds like you're describing a point in time mm -hmm. versus trending. So, but this is last seven days, so how far back will that go, or will it always just never be more than the last week? As much as you'll keep in the database, so the intention is you'll be able to then keep, determine how long you want to keep that information, um, and then you'll be able to go back historically and look and determine where issues occurred. So, say that you got some notification there was a problem last week, you just got around to looking at it because it wasn't critical, you can go back and determine, okay, what was that, and let's make sure that that doesn't happen again, or, or does somebody's access need to be restricted because they made a change and they shouldn't have. Uh, I may be repeating myself. It feels like there should be <coughs> trending, or you were saying you can go somewhere else for the trending. So that, that's the aspect. In, in this context, we aren't looking at today the concept of trending out. Is there issues that are happening at a regular interval? And then say, okay, here's likely the, the root cause. Um, but that, that is interesting, and, and it is something that we could definitely determine.